بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا والشفيعين ونور قلوبنا قرة عيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارئ وسلم وتتعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر والنفع والانتفاء والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا رحم الرحيم اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يا غني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يا غني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يا غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله ببرس الله سبحانه وتعالى for Gathering us over and over again, in spite of ourselves, with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, for um, for giving us in in this time all these means of uh, being together in creation, uh, in in uh, in His creation that He has, uh, Allahumma sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Muhammad, that He has, uh, Allahumma sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Muhammad, and that He has uh, made easy for us. Right, that technology is uh, from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a tool from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a uh, place uh, in the hands of, the, of a human being as a test right? and for those who and it's the same thing from, from a time of before technology to the time of technology the same test that uh, whatever tools in your hand that you place it in service of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the religion and in service of uh, the creation uh, all of us in, in a hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that all of you are the, the dependents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of his dependents are those who are ben- most beneficial to his dependents and there is um, mashallah that is what we see in the life of our Prophet, of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when a person removes from himself and any weight right, on the self Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He becomes the best of servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the best of those who benefit Those uh, uh, to benefit others Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam This is one of the uh, In fact, of the many, many, many uh, things That, that would uh, really um, you know, uh, place a person in much amazement Of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The complete selflessness like of him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, alhamdulillah, we are in our uh, the years of of the wufud, and alhamdulillah, we're going to take our time right, going through each of the uh, the delegations that come to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is, is of the most of the of the most uh, important uh, subjects in Sira to really uh, analyze. And every week we will, we will repeat this every week. Because it's one thing, it's one part of Sira that people tend to skip over, and they tend to just you know uh, go quickly like, over all the people who came to Rasulullah to to give bayah. You know, it, had it been something that was as uh, that was as um, uneventful as people just coming and giving bayah to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, the companions wouldn't have you know seen the importance to narrate the, the the very detail of what these people were doing and what they were saying. To Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi was the point their names were being mentioned right, and what what and and the and the conversation between them and Rasulullah sallam was recorded you know memorized and and, and then transmitted and the, the different types of people coming to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasam not all of them who came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasam was sincere and right, not all of them in fact today we're going to a story inshallah right, of uh, of the of those who actually came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasam um, having other motives. Uh, in, and in fact, when when their motives were not met, and the Rasulullah, of course, you know, he's he's a prophet, sallallahu alaihi He can tell, you know, from from how a person comes and how and what they, they are focused on, you know, what uh, uh, whether or not to 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 give in to their request. And we will see, you know, mashallah, that that this is a proof of prophethood, right? That there are people who come and they will say, oh, they want to come, they want they want to become Muslim, but then they will say, but but you know, uh, ya Rasulullah, without. Uh, without the prayer and allow us to drink alcohol and allow us to commit adultery and allow us to and then like, like in the sense like that they want to be Muslim without Islam you know <laughs> and then the whole thing was removed from the from the conditions but let us be Muslim without Islam and then Rasulullah says no 
basically outright no. <laughs> like he can because he's not the legislator. I mean, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who set down the law. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's a prophet. He is his his duty is to is to uh, relay. And uh, to to inform people of the law that Allah Subhanahu has sent down, it's not on him to change the law. It's not on him. Right, so, it, um, and you will find that in in the in this wufud, you know, the years of delegations, that there will be those right who will speak to Rasulullah Islam, and they will they will request all these things, and they were even those. And you will see that is is that they were they were coming into Islam more of a they were of them more of a practical step, right? Then it was um, then it was because of true belief. Right, because there were those who would come to Rasulullah and say to him, uh, and after declaring their faith, right, they would say, um, uh, let our idol stay in our town for a while, right, for three years. Let us kind of wean off of our idol. Like, like in, in a sense, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, I mean, if you, if you say, Ashtu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashtu Allah Muhammad Rasulullah, then the idol is the first thing to go. <laughs> right? But there will be those who request you know, for three years, and the Rasulullah says no And then they can even request for two years And he said no And he said well, one year He says no <laughs> And they and will say for a few months Have our idols here for a few months And he will say no right? it's, it's not It doesn't make doesn't, doesn't, This is aqidah right? Aqidah is not to be Is not to be compromised in any way Aqidah is aqidah you know, And even uh, when you speak about sharia What is clear in the Quran What is clearly um, uh, instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Five times a day prayers Five times right? No one is to, is to change that <laughs> To manipulate that right? uh, Fasting you know, And then what is haram The sum is haram is haram right? uh, No one is to say That it's not haram right? So the Prophet Was not given uh, any authority uh, in, in fact, in fact you know, this, is the, this shows the, the proof of prophethood That you know, had it been someone you know, Who had some sort of um, uh, you know, Motive in wanting to gain power you know, and to gain land, to gain followers, right? They would compromise whatever they can compromise, right? To get people on their side. But you see here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and here, uh, you know, has 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 um, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has taught His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, to the point whereby, you know, not not to, about this situation, mashallah, you know, there was no. Um, there was no compromise whatsoever, right? But when you look at um, the tafsir of uh, in, Surah, in Surah Kahfi, right, whereby uh, there were of the Muslims who had come into Islam, right, who had come to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they didn't want to sit with the with the poor, right? So they had requested from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to to make for them a majlis where they can sit with him, right, and they can learn Islam from him, right? And and to that, you know, for most of us, you'd be like. Okay lah. I mean, whatever brings the da'wah right to people. I mean, you, for most of us, you know, to think about it, like, we would say, you would say, yeah. I mean, if that, if that, if that would make people listen, you know, if they want, there were such requests. yeah, there were such requests. <laughs> there were actually such requests that they didn't want to sit with the poor, right? But they were Muslims, you know. They, but because they stayed they used to their, you would say, their, uh, their, their, uh, in the sense, you see their chara, you know, their, their way, you know, they, 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 those who are aristocrats as well, you know, of higher class in society, don't see those who are lower class. Right? So Islam came to remove that, right? completely remove that. So there were those who actually requested um, to, uh, uh, that this happen. Uh, they they want to. Yes, uh, so they wanted to actually different have like classes, you know, with Rasulullah Islam, but only the nobles. So the the poor and the slave and and like you know the people like like Sayyidina Bilal you know Sayyidina Salman Sayyidina these are people who they don't sit with, right? So and they they did request that we want to learn to the religion, and so put for put aside time for us, you know where we can learn from you, and the rest of the time we can learn from you can teach the the rest of them, you know. And so they didn't stop it, but they they kind of like in a sense distinguish themselves. You know, they, they, this is a very like a form of elitist uh, kind of attitude. And uh, at first, initially, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi saw it as da'wah. You know, and he uh, he he gave it to the request. I mean, he he agreed, but straight away Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sent down uh, uh, the Jibril, sent down Jibril, right, to tell Rasulullah Sallam, don't do that, right, don't give in to this kind of requests, right. So this was something that is not you know you say uh, outright haram. You know, but it's something of more like you think, know, oh, it might be like a way of da'wah. And and, and mashallah, and like for us, you think, yeah, it, it might be a way of da'wah. Right? And in fact, if you go through the, the, the tafsir of Surah uh, Kafir, of Surah Kafirun, 
and when they came and they, and they tried to make some sort of uh, agreement with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that one year you pray to our God and then one year we pray to your God, which shows a complete lack in aqidah. There's no there's no belief going on. It is a matter of of basically. Um, Exerting someone's or flexing their muscle, you know, like, like it says, like okay, we we own, we have the power this year, and they say you have, you know, power over people, and this is our authority, and this is your authority. Like, what do you believe in? <laughs> if you believe in something, you don't go back and forth, like on it. So, it, uh, and of course, for that in Surah Kafirun, I and mean, there was no, uh, there was no giving in at all with aqidah, right? Um, for with the request from, from those Muslims who were of the higher class, I mean, of of in in a sense, you know, richer Muslims. There was a um, there was what, what what happened was that it was some some something like it was not on side of aqidah, nor fiqh, right? but it was on the part of adab, you know. So on the part of adab, even that no compromise, <laughs> even that. Right? If you don't, if they want to learn, sit, right? Sit as how the the other people sit, and do not exalt yourself or raise yourself over other people just because you know of something of the dunya. Right? When 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 the be- when when what is being preached. Is that a dunya does not make someone better than somebody else, right? So, so you know, so in the halaqa, right, there shouldn't be this uh, situation. But mashallah, you know, mashallah, we learn this all from our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the best of examples. And and we and mashallah, when when it came to the story of uh, in in, this, in the case of of Surah Kafirun, right, where they did this, you know, and and for myself when I was reading through the the. The how how they they tried to de- make a deal for Rasulullah Islam. I was actually thinking, isn't it a good deal? Just like <laughs> I was, I was, I was just thinking that one year you just make them Muslim, they probably convert <laughs> at the end of the year, <laughs> and then and then they don't have to continue the plan. <laughs> like just convert and enter the Islam, and then that everybody become Muslim, right? So in a sense, like 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 I was I was actually thinking that when I was saying that I said, but just to agree to that. Right shows um, there is uh, something wrong in the aqidah, right? So even though that there's no plan to go ahead and you know, because hopefully you all become Muslim by the end of the year, <laughs> right? Uh, and then and then you know everyone just continue every year, uh, you know, worshiping Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But to agree to that is it somewhat like to 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 agree to there being a possibility, that, you know, even the faintest possibility of that of that happening, um, and of course. The affair is in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? The entire, the whole, the whole shatn, right? The whole, the whole, the whole, um, uh, you say, uh, that everything's in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this shows. So for, for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you see, he is one who is not out, right, to please. In a sense, in a sense, uh, that you say he 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 has his his character. Uh, is uh, mashallah is it's is beautiful right, as of itself you know and the way he handles people is 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 the most attractive right, as you know it that any human being has ever had but you see that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has given us a very strong and very clear principle right when it comes to da'wah right at which part you know in da'wah is there a pulling of the people to attract them and which part is it going across? You're crossing lines that is not meant to be crossed, right? That they cannot be crossed, right? So you will swear in, in going through the wufud, right, you see where Rasulullah Sallam he will stand his ground, right? Because uh, truth is truth, you know, truth is truth, and uh, the, the people on truth should never fear right, that truth is not accepted, because truth is clear, right? But it's just that uh, it's just that you know sometimes it is ourselves. That we don't have full conviction in the way of our Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, full conviction in the you know in 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 the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That we think another method is uh, will be more convincing, or another method will be better. There is no the the best da'i, the best one to call to Islam, the best example that we have till the end of time is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nobody will be a better will bring a better method. Than him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so, so subhanallah, you know, uh, this is why the years of the, the years of of, of food. Right, uh, last week we were. Last week, uh, we were in the part of. Allahumma sallam. The arrival of the dedication of Bani Tamim and the revelation of Surah Hujurat. Right, so before going into that, I actually want to go into one of the. Uh, food that uh, Habib mentioned 
right, about raising, uh, do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then first, then because you see in the the the, the way the wufud is being uh, arranged in this book is different from uh, the way Habib teaches, right? So he he goes in a sequence, right? So for this uh, book, it goes in a different sequence altogether. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so Bismillah. We're on page. Those of you who have the book, <laughs> we are on page uh, three hundred and forty. For those at home, they all have the book. Uh, three hundred and forty. The reason for the revelation of the verses, O you who have believed, do not raise your voice, for your voices above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This uh, this commandment stands, right? Of course, till the, till our day. The, uh, the scholars of the past. For example, Imam Malik radiallahu anhu, right, whenever he would narrate hadith uh, from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, they would see his face, his the, the color in his in his face, literally it would go away. He would turn pale, right, and he would be in full presence of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, and and he would narrate uh, the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So whenever um, whenever we hear hadith being recited in its Arabic. Right to and even if let's say like you know now if all if everything being online, right, and and you hear, um, you know, are you going specifically for classes whereby hadith is being recited, right? So the Arabic, especially the Arabic, and if you can the English also, right, to respect the uh, the words of Rasulullah, even in translation, that you respect it, and then there are of the scholars who respect. Uh, the words of the Quran in Arabic and in translation, you know, whatever is linked in any way right, to the sacred texts right, of the Quran and Hadith, right, they will not uh, do anything of uh, that is that is of lack of adab right, towards uh, the Quran and Hadith. So it is narrated that when a delegation of Bani Tamim came to Rasulullah wasallam and embraced Islam, they asked the Prophet wasallam to choose a leader from amongst them. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr who suggested Al Qa'qa right, bin Al Ma'abad and Sayyidina Umar who suggested Al Aqra bin Al Habis and Sayyidina Abu Bakr to Sayyidina Umar that he only sought to disagree with him and Sayyidina Umar denied that. So they began to argue in front of uh, they began to argue uh, in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and their voice began to uh, to, to, to rise, you know, mashallah. Um, and, and, and at this point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed, O oh, you have believed, and uh, do not uh, advance not before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet and revere Allah, for surely Allah is all here and all knowing. And also, O oh, you who have believed, do not raise your voice above the voice of the Prophet, nor address him in the manner that you address one another. Uh, let, uh, perhaps your deeds become will come to nothing and you are unaware. Okay, these verses, you know, in commentary of these verses, is that it shows the importance you know, and the emphasis on etiquette. In front of um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then in front of our teachers uh, who have inherited uh, the knowledge from our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When it comes to knowledge, uh, it is not it is not about just you know just just you know uh, taking the words and then mem- and then memorizing them or being able to quote them. When it comes to knowledge, it is about etiquette. It's all about etiquette, etiquette, etiquette. It's adab, 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 right? And that is knowledge, right? So, so when it comes to, you know, uh, signing up, when it comes to going for classes now, now it is online, right? To always maintain the adab of classes, right? So still, if you're if you're able to be in wudu, if you be in wudu, if you're able to do your siwak, you know, with your uh, cleanliness, uh, with uh, you know whatever it takes, you know, to actually try and maintain a form of, uh, uh, of tranquility. The sakina, right? In uh, and, and and from there, right? Uh, you can, inshallah, you know, and from there, a person will gain as much, will will gain more from the knowledge that is being delivered, right? Than someone who is not, uh, not observant, you know, on or someone who is negligent of the etiquettes that's there. So here, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in a sense, the 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 reprimand came straight away, right, to the companions teaching them. So all in the met- in a way of teaching. And, the, and mashallah, all, all of the companions, when we read through the stories of the companions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward them greatly on our behalf, that they were this, the, to, always, uh, to always keep in mind that they were a nation right, chosen, by the prof, uh, chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be, to be, in, to be the support for His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, so no matter what we see of them and their stories, especially what will come after this, 
in in the years of the fitna between uh, you won't you don't say fitna between the companions, but you say fitna between the people around the companions. Right? There was never a fitna between the companions' companions. Right? Those who were the true Sahaba, they never f- actually fought each other head on. Right? But they were they were manipulated, and the people who claimed them because there are people who were claiming the Sahaba, right? they were the ones who were fighting. And back and, uh, uh, against each other. So to be very clear, that you don't say that you know we don't say at all that Sayyidina Aisha she fought Sayyidina Ali. There was no fighting that happened between them. Right? But there was basically a confusion. The people who claimed them, right? the, those that there were people underneath that who were not Sahaba, right? uh, but they came later on. They were the ones who were causing the, um, the, the the fitna and the fight between right? the companions. Mashallah, they they know the station of other companions. <laughs> you know they they know it. Right, so while they might have disagreements, you don't see that they fight, right? Because they were, you know, the training that they had gone through, uh, you know, at the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, it was you brought them to a level whereby their selflessness was so uh, evident because it's from something that they, that, they, that they inherited from their teachers, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, that someone of that kind of selflessness, right? They wouldn't. There is no, you know, they wouldn't fight right, in that way. They will disagree. Uh, because of different uh, interpretations, you know, different uh, you know, in, or different viewpoint of views, but they will not they will not come to uh, to, to to fight each other, right? Knowing the consequence of fighting someone saying la ilaha illa Rasulullah, sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam, or and and especially with someone whom the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, you know, Allah Allah fi ashabi, right? Uh, meaning pay attention to the importance of my companions and who are they? Right? So this is a selected group. The first gener- generation. Right? So for us, when you, when you read the stories of the companions, to first understand right, that we are nothing compared to the caliber that they had, right? to compared to the where they were, you know, that we are not to compare ourselves at all or to see why are they like that? Why are you saying now because you know, Omar have a disagreement? Right? They can possibly have a disagreement, right? but you won't say it. Uh, but the thing about it is that is to understand that, you know, where they were coming from. And mashallah, you know, once, once and the, for the companions, the moment they were, that they were reprimanded in, in, in any way in the Quran, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi it, it takes one time reprimanding. And it's a learned lesson. Right? It's a, like they, they don't, they don't do it ever again. Right? So Sayyidina Umar, you know, at that point, <laughs> after the revolution, revolution of the verse, Sayyidina Umar's voice could not be heard unless uh, he was asked a question by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever he was in their presence, that he would never, you know, they would speak in the whispers in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr vowed they would never speak to, um, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but as, except as one who whispers. That means, uh, read the full sentence. Eh? <laughs> and then he vowed never to, this is how they speak in Arabic, that the only way he would speak to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in a low voice in full uh, etiquette uh, towards the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is another um, narration you know about of, of sometimes the companions when, when they, whenever they argue in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam right there will be uh, like a loss in, in 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 information that he was about to deliver to the one example was was uh, the night of decree that al qadr whereby he came out to inform the companions what Jibril told him about when is the night of decree but when he found people were there were a few people who were arguing in the in uh, in, in the masjid that he or outside the masjid that he uh, he was he was there to to stop the argument, and then he forgot right, what was the information that was given to him, what was taken away from him, right, the information of when was the Qadr. and here it shows us a very important uh, prophetic principle here right, that the moment people um, get into arguments. Right, or they go into uh, negativity, right, the baraka goes away. Right, the baraka goes away. I right, should be very, very careful about that. Right, so um, the blessing. Right, you, you can disagree, but disagree in a civilized manner. Right, don't like, disagree as, as adults. Right, just disagree. You can disagree. Right, but not to raise your voice, not to get angry, right, not to, get, um, up, uh, to, to, to hurt each other, their feelings, not to use harsh words. So all things, you know, in a hadith is a signs of the munafiq, signs of the hypocrite. That when he argues, he goes overboard, right? Basically, if human beings are, are allowed to disagree. Right? You can disagree all you want if you want. I mean, if it's not a matter of uh, something that is clear in the religion, right? And even then, just state what, state what is clear and then stop there. 
right? don't pursue the, especially if it's clear in the religion so if someone says you know uh, something is haram and it is not haram if it's clear in the religion halas you know, don't go don't go into the argu- don't go into argument here because it will bring it will bring more fitna if it's clear if it's something that is you know like uh, not based on the religion but just something that is opinion right then say your opinion say his opinion you can discuss it if you're if you're able to discuss it in a way whereby no one gets upset <laughs> Right, so you can just discuss it, you know. But if you know that either yourself or the person involved can't discuss things without getting upset, then not discuss, lah. What's the whole point, right? Now, if it's, if if there, what was the point? Now, if the point is to force someone on your opinion, then why? Why is there a need to do so, right? Or and, and are you even able to do so to force people on your opinion? You're just gonna make people upset that they they just gonna have to drag their feet and do what they, what you what you want them to do, and even then there's gonna be a forcing not a discussion, right? So in a sense, whenever these things happen, especially in the realm of um, the dawah, right? And here there is there is dawah going on, right? They they are they are choosing a leader, right? For the people who have come in, and in fact they have just come into Islam, right? So it's all lessons, you know. Uh, then then on the companions, what may Allah be pleased with them and reward them greatly on our behalf. Uh, for narrating <laughs> what happened also you know you see that they, they, they even you know inform the people thereafter what happened <laughs> and then the, the result this verse was, was, was revealed because of the situation that happened so now I was in Omar you know mashallah um, but in any in any work uh, to Allah subhanahu any work you know inshallah in calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that as far as possible do not have anything of the self enter into it right or do not have anything of of negativity of argument of, of fighting enter into it because the baraka will go away right but it's always you know like we hear we obey or, or like whatever that you know someone anyone's oversight or anyone's you know um uh, lack of uh, basically someone's you know short sighted short sighted short sightedness or anyone who's you know whatever faults people make you know their their mistakes just cover cover over it you know give them ex- give ex- excuses and cover over it and do it for them and not go around trying to uh, complain and go on and on about it you know, Allah forgive us <laughs> for doing that it removes the baraka the blessing is gone. And your blessing in energy, blessing in time, blessing in money, blessing in, in, in a lot of things is all it, 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 it drains the person and it drains the people who are involved and, and unable to uh, perform and uh, unable to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of their ability. And may Allah give us understanding of these things. You know, and this is how we see in the time of life of Rasulullah and our teachers will, will mention this over and over again. Right? Be very be be aware of this. Right? Don't let your Emotions get the better of you, right? Uh, you know, focus is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Focus, right? And then, uh, and when you when you focus, a lot of things you can just let go. They don't bo- they don't bother you. <laughs> just let go. Unless you know, even, even when it comes to it, like sins is is happening, you nahi anil mungar, right? You you point out what is a sin, and then there is not to be done. Then don't take things personally. <laughs> It's, it's easier said than done, yeah. So when <laughs> a whole lot easier, right? but it's to be said so that it can be done. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, we can. We will take a break now for Isha, for those who are going to pray, right? and then we come back and uh, when people come back. Okay. Right. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammadin wa ala alihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alamin.